What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK, S-C-H-L-O-C-K, for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. Oh man, all these wrestling news sites are terrible. What's the matter, young lad? Ah, Mother Superior! No, don't hit me! Uh, I I mean, I I can't find a good wrestling news site. A good wrestling news site? What's... What's so good about a good wrestling news site anyway? Well, I just need a place where I could get all the, the backstage news and rumors and scoop. All right. Don't hit me. I listen. left the orphanage a while ago. All right, listen, Billy's younger brother. I'm not going to hit you this time. Oh, thank you. But I will tell you about a great wrestling news site. Okay. It's, it's, it's not terrible like the last one, right? It's not terrible like the last one. It's called WrestlingNewsWorld.com. You can get all the latest wrestling news, spoilers, results, all the news from all over the wrestling world. That sounds great. No, yeah. it, yes, but you know what? what? It's not going to sound great if you still if you keep up with that mouth of yours. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, again, I left the orphanage a while ago. Uh, if you don't leave, I'm going to tell my parents. I have legal precedent over thirty-seven states. Get back here! Oh, stop hitting me! <laughs> WrestlingNewsWorld.com. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah, yes. Uh, how can I? Uh, are, are, can... are you a Dennis Dimster Dink? That can't be right. Oh, please don't say my name out loud. Uh, sir, I'm I'm uh, Agent Johnson from the Child Protective Services of California, and I have some questions for you uh, about your latest film, Mikey. Oh, you want to know, like, about how we made it? Well, see, what happened was... Well, um, actually, yes, I do want to know about how you made it. There was clearly a young child in the same frame with a nude woman who he electrified. He also beat a man to death with a baseball bat and killed his own sister. Uh, so what's your question? Well, I need to speak to not only the people who were involved with uh, worker safety for this, because some of those burns looked pretty real... Also, I need to speak to our representative, I need their contact information, uh, from Child Protective Services, who was supposed to be on set when a film like this atrocity is made. Were his parents involved? Uh, you know, his his aunt was on the set. It's all good, it's all good, you know. Sir, I don't uh, contend with your idea that it is all good. You, know, you got the Dennis Dimster Dink guarantee that everything was good. Well, Mr. Dink... Uh, I'm just gonna talk to my superior here. Just give me a moment. All right. No, I'm talking to him now. I don't care. No, what do you mean? No, it's just Miramax. It'll be fine. I gotta finish up with this guy, and then I'll get over and talk to Weinstein. Okay. There. Now, Mr. Dink, I have to go take care of a situation that's apparently happening over at Miramax, but I can give you my card, and you are not to leave town. Okay, listen, I'm just going to be right over here filming Mikey 2. I'm sure that'll be fine. You know when I pick a movie That's when I'm on to pressure now The question always comes back to me What were they thinking now? We have a theme song. We do. It played just now. Didn't you hear it? Oh, my. Oh, sorry. No, I was uh, too busy trying to wrap my head around the idea of this movie. <laughs> yeah, it played live here in studio. There you go. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we watched the movie Mikey, released in yes. 1992. And yes, the director's name is Dennis Dimster Dink. <laughs> Oh, uh, I remember seeing this movie when I was a kid, and yes, that's right. Again, dark <laughs> childhood comes into 
<laughs> focus here. Pulp Fiction, uh, Mikey, Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> I thought when this movie was released that it was a Halloween prequel at first. Oh, okay. I could see that. Because, yeah, because of Mikey and the Michael Myers thing. I thought it was a prequel originally, and then my brother and I watched it, and, uh, you know, um, it, we found out, obviously, that it wasn't, but we were also still, you know, pleasantly surprised, because we both enjoyed this movie considerably. Mm. We're wrong people. <laughs> well, I will go on record, and we have done some crazy movies. I will say this is possibly the most batshit insane movie I'm going to do my best to couch my words uh, so as not to uh, offend my bestest Facebook buddy, Brian Bonsall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Brian is great. Yeah. Brian the... is one of the positive parts of this movie, I would say. But this movie is crazy. <laughs> it is It is pretty out there, and there's a lot of things to uh, um, <laughs> to talk about. Well, um, I, I did I did reach out to uh, to Brian to see if he wanted to do a possibly interview. Unfortunately, he he wasn't able to. Uh, right now, he's touring with the Ataris. Um, we're not bestest Facebook buddies either. Just putting that out there. I'm not some weird star stalker. I just thought I think it's kind of interesting that one of my Facebook friends is you know Brian Bonsall, the kid who was Alexander on Star Trek, and Andy from the Family Ties movie, television show. Can you imagine <laughs> someone watching Family Ties and then watching this movie? Yes, because that happened to me. Oh dear. Dude, the, I'm telling you, my brother and I knew who the kid was when we were little when we went and rented this movie we were like oh that's andy from family ties he's in a horror movie well we gotta see this <laughs> and uh of course then he later started one of the best movies of all time uh blank check yes uh, he was also in a movie with patrick swayze called fatherhood which was uh uh i think i feel is an underappreciated direct video gem which n- not the steve martin movie like i originally thought when i found it <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I was like, Patrick Swayze's in this movie? Yeah, I think you're thinking of Parenthood. Oh, maybe. Yeah, they're two different movies. So let's talk about how, before we get into the movie, the movie was banned in the UK. Yes, uh, because, because of, uh, of yeah, the content, and there was also that um, unfortunate case where the, a couple of schoolboys killed a younger child. Yeah, that was the J- uh, James Bulger uh, murder. Yes. Um... It was, and, and even in 1996, they refused to uh, give it any kind of release. But apparently, as of last year, they said if it was resubmitted, there may be a chance that it would get a UK release. But I, I, I don't think anyone's going to do that. <laughs> no, I as far I don't know who owns the uh, the rights to the movie at this point, um, because. I know that the uh, the VHSs are long under print, obviously, uh, and if you check on, I think Amazon or eBay, uh, some of the DVDs are like astronomically priced. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You want Mikey? You're paying 145 bones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and all, all due respect to uh, the <laughs> Brian Bonsall, 145 dollars for this movie <laughs> is, a, is a bit much. This is a little steep. It's a little steep. Yeah. Um, Although I will say this, I we, you joked about the the sequel, uh, the director making the sequel during the uh, open there. I legitimately wanted a sequel so I could know more about Mikey. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> there's so many things that they just kind of leave hanging out there. They don't, uh, they they mention like his like his birth parents and stuff like that, but they don't uh, they don't actually fully, you know, get into it. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I know I know what you mean. It's definitely open for that. Um. Also, this is a weird point, but it was banned in the United Kingdom. However, not in Ireland. <laughs> no, because they're two separate countries. Wasn't well, Ireland part of the United Kingdom? Well, it was banned in Britain. Oh, see, I, I saw that it was banned in the entire UK. No, uh, The it, film it, was it, withdrawn from release in the United Kingdom, is what it said. Yeah. But, but I just think it's funny that Ireland's the one country that's like, we'll play it. <laughs> And I think this is, like you said, uh, this is our first movie that's ever we've done that was ever been banned anywhere. Yeah, because we haven't done Cannibal Holocaust. <sighs> a missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last thing I think before we get into it, uh, into the content of the movie, something about the tagline. Maybe I'm looking too much into it, but when someone says the term "size matters" or "size doesn't matter," 
I think it's mm-hmm. pretty obvious they're referring to, you know, dick size. Because that's like, that's right. one of those common phrases, right? When, yeah. On the cover of this movie, it says, with evil, size doesn't matter. And that well, just, I think they made it pretty clearly that they're talking about evil in this case. I still find it odd that they use that terminology. <laughs> hey, basically, the movie is about a giant evil penis. Well, uh, I, when I uh, saw one of the taglines I saw was that, um, was it even Freddy and Jason were kids too once? Yeah. Or something along those lines, which, again, they mentioned Freddy and Jason, but not Michael Myers, so it led me to believe that this was a Halloween prequel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, let's get into this thing. Fire starter! Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. That's my best prodigy impression. I'm not I, very good at it. When, when... So at the beginning, he's he's lighting stuff on fire in a basement, and yes. the way he's looking at that uh, match, I was just like, "Is this? This feels like it's going to be like an origin story for like the Human Torch or something." <laughs> I I did like one of the things I did like about is in the movie that they definitely covered a lot of the markers that make for um, you know psychopathy or sociopathy uh, in people. You know the whole fire starter thing. Um, uh, uh, the fake or disingenuous emotion, that sort of thing. Uh, not being able to attach to people, that sort of stuff. I, I did like that. It was it was nicely covered, but that's really one of the only things that they kind of got accurate. The whole adoption system. <laughs> we're gonna get into that because I have adopted kids. It is not like that at all. It's not flawlessly presented in this film. You don't pick your kid up at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is coming up soon. Um, so <laughs> I want to know what did you, do you think Brian Bonsall was told this was a different movie by the director? Like, do you think he was told he was a killer child? I I would say he'd have to. Yeah, because I know like a lot of like a lot of uh, child actors. Like for instance, uh, Planet Terror, when Robert Rodriguez had a, a scene where his his son gets killed. Um, he never told him that. Racer, my boy, <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Racer, <laughs> do what do I do now? <laughs> Shock boy and lava girl tanked, you idiot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just like sometimes they tell like the child acts or something else is going on. But yeah, I know what you mean. Like, if there's no way. Like what? What, no, what movie would you no, think he was in? <laughs> there's no way. He he bludgeons a guy to death with a baseball bat. He has he has lines that you know are ridiculous. Like, teach me how to die. Like the the oh. dialogue in this movie is, oh my god, amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So first off, the audio when when he's burning this thing and you see like his uh his sister or like he's adopted in this family right off the bat. Yes. Um yes. and his sister is there and the mom walks in and she's very angry. All their audio sounds like it was recorded in like an empty room. <laughs> Could have been. It's not <laughs> like, it's not the it doesn't have the highest production value, I'll tell you that. There's some ADR. Yeah. <laughs> um and she is very mad. Yeah, uh, which brings us to our first uh point. Uh you're not allowed to slap adopted kids were you in 1992 though i don't i don't think that would be something that you would be allowed to do in 92 even in 92 maybe if this was like 82 i might have been i might see it but i i feel that there was enough known about you know childhood trauma and the stuff like that that they would be like you know what you shouldn't hit adopted kids because you don't know what traumas they've gone through which is one of the reasons why you're still not allowed to do which it's a good thing yeah oh no it's a hard rule to follow sometimes but it's a good thing (laughs) i'm not advocating for its return or anything like that i just (laughs) yeah older movies you tend to see it a little bit more but um yeah so so his sister is quick to be like no no it was mikey that did it obviously um he wants her to kind of take the blame so he steals her doll Mm-hmm. And decides to drown it. This is this is the first point in the movie where it really starts to get crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the girl goes onto this diving board and she's like trying to reach in to grab her doll, but she's like so far from the water. No mm-hmm. amount of stretching would get her anywhere close to the doll. No, and, and also, I mean, if you're if you're gonna have a pool, 
you you're, you should at least have taught your kids how to swim. <laughs> That's true too. So. Yeah, we have a pool. Don't go in it, and I'm not <laughs> teaching you how to swim. <laughs> and so he jumps up and down on the diving board, causing her to fall in and drown. He kills mm-hmm. a ch- guys in the first three minutes of this movie. A child dies on screen. <laughs> Drowns his sister. Yep. <laughs> three minutes. That's the cold open. <laughs> Very cold. Uh, <laughs> cold blooded even. Yeah. There you go. Hey. Oh. All right there. <laughs> We're rolling here. Oh, and, and this now there's a there's a reoccurring thing that's happening now. So the mother has taken a bath. Yep. And she's on the phone. Now here's the reoccurring thing. Um the phone cuts out because he obviously cuts the wires. Mikey cuts the wires or whatever. Yes. But instead <laughs> she just hits the back of it. <laughs> Like, uh, you know, the old, those old cordless phones, they were terrible on batteries and they were prone to cutting out. But I think hers was a corded. No, it was cordless. I'm pretty sure it was cordless. But, well, later in the movie, he does it to a, co- a corded phone. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just like, I, I just love any scene in a movie where there's, hello? T- t- hello? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid phone. Yeah. It just went dead. I'll just hit it. Um, yeah. And then, here comes... A great death scene. <laughs> and an implausible one. Yes. Uh, I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with you. Because that was quite the electric shock. <laughs> yeah, well, here's and here's the reason. Uh, Mikey is, you know, mouthing off to his mom for punishing him. Or his adopted mom for punishing him. And he's got a uh, corded uh, hair dryer. And he's dangling it. And, he, and he, like he's going to toss it in. And she's like, Mikey, don't do that. And he just throws it in she catches it yeah it doesn't even touch the water first of all right so it wouldn't it shouldn't uh initiate the electrocution two if it did it's 1992 in a new construction home that thing would have had circuit breakers and it would have popped the breaker yeah uh yeah anytime you see a movie where someone like throws like I don't know, a blow dryer or like a toaster or something into into the water. Like it's it's usually bullshit. Yeah. Especially like I said with the with a new construction home, it's <laughs> the breaker would pop before I had the opportunity to do any real damage. She might have got knocked out. She might have been in trouble with drowning, but she would not have been electrocuted and burned at the severity that she was. No, she was and then later we see her and she is like on she is like a charcoal crispy critter. Yeah. Absolutely. So <laughs> But that, actually, you know what? I think this last death may be my favorite. <laughs> oh, did you notice that he was watching America's Funniest Home Videos before Dad came home? I did not. Yeah. Uh, I, they didn't show Bob Saget. You just kind of hear just a, a glimpse of his voice for a second. You're like, oh, playing a little hide and seek. And the kid opens a, a, a closet door and a bunch of stuff falls off uh, out and onto him like in a real slapsticky kind of way. Well, this... Um... This movie must be a fan of it because later he makes a joke about Mikey's funniest home videos. Yes. So <laughs> it's a tie. He in. records all of this. That's the, everything. Oh, yes. That is the <laughs> other thing. This kid who is nine years old has a camcorder is recording back in the day when these things were not common too. like not, not as common. And oh yeah. A, a small, a compact camcorder like he had easily five hundred dollars if not more yeah so he records all his murders and somehow police have never like found that camcorder yeah when they come to investigate anyway so the dad the (laughs) the dad comes home and he trips on marbles that mikey has set up and just like flies through the glass door yeah just right through the plate glass window with almost no like pressure just immediately goes through it like water like he was thrown through it yeah (laughs) and then just lays there waiting for mikey to come up to him with a baseball bat and he beats his face in (laughs) yeah there's so many times in this movie where i'm like you know what i'm an adult however if a nine-year-old was and trip me with marbles through a plate glass door. I would not stand there and let him approach me with a baseball bat. I would fuck that nine year old up. I don't care. Yeah. Send me to jail. I'll still be alive. 
<laughs> yeah, there's a certain line. Once the kid starts getting a knife out or a bat or anything like that, I'm done. Like, it's not a kid yeah. anymore. It's a, a it's a, an aggressor. It's a murder machine. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a great twist. He's a robot the whole time? <laughs> Mikey's a robot the whole time, yeah. <laughs> Make it happen. Mikey, too. <laughs> so, yeah. So, the fa- he kills the whole family. Cops show up. Cops show up du- uh, wearing a great duster. Oh my god, and, and, and not not just the duster, but everybody else is in power suits. Like, you can tell that this was the tail end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s just because everybody was in, like, these big shouldered power suits in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very... It feels more 80s than 90s to me, honestly. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's definitely that transition period. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then there's a great, there's a, there's a great bit here because he's trying to, I think he's trying to make a joke, but it does, I don't really get, I, I get what he's saying, but the joke doesn't really make any sense because they go over to the mother and the woman that's there says age 32 and he goes, and fried. What the, how is, that's not even, that's, that's worse than David Caruso and CSI Miami. <laughs> That's not even like a, a clever pun. It's not a pun or a play on words or anything. Just and fried. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yep. Yeah. So they, did it did it come off to you that he was upset with the CPS lady? Oh, the woman that was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like, don't talk He's to like, her. oh my god, this one again. Yeah. Can I just talk to the kid that supposedly just saw his whole family get murdered? Yeah, because, I mean, at this point, they don't know, right? right? And they figure that Mikey's witnessed this traumatic event because they found him in a closet. Yes. So. Did you think, so after this, they take Mikey to a psychiatrist. Or... I thought that psychiatrist was the old guy from Clerks. It was not but it, I really thought it was. <laughs> I was going to say... The guy who dies in the bathroom? Yeah. I was going to yeah. say that I thought that scene was really odd because <laughs> he... Remember he describes a random person. He says, like, oh, it was a man in a brown uh, the brown car. He had a, he had a, mustache, a mustache and a red shirt. So Burt Reynolds was the killer. Yeah. <laughs> It was he was bandit from Smokey and the Bandit, man. <laughs> they should have just cut to Burt Reynolds getting arrested. Hey, what I do? <laughs> but uh. but my thing is, so did he make those toys specifically based on his description? No, I, I well, I because mean, because the man has a mustache a- wearing a red shirt in a brown car. <laughs> well, the brown car that easy enough to get a hold of. I mean, like I said, Smokey and the Bandit was popular in the 80s and toys like that it's nothing to throw a slap of paint on that or whatever uh a lot of psychiatrists do that kind of play therapy and things like that it was a little odd that it was super specific like i, I would have let it go with just like a guy uh, in a mustache in a, in a car yeah and i think they would have got that across it didn't have to be so super specific it did it did seem a little odd we need to get the minute details 100% yeah. correct. <laughs> I, I do I do I do model painting on the the weekend. I take care of this. <laughs> Just the doctor painting a, d- that little doll in the car different colors every weekend to deal with the kids he's going to be dealing with that week. <laughs> what do we got this week? Uh a woman in a white dress and a blue Volvo. Got it. I'll get to work this Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> um I have I just have a note here that says Andrea Dice Clay. Oh, the sister. Yeah. Or the aunt, rather. Yeah, who's like, I don't want none of that kid. Yeah. Um, they basically... Okay, so this is where the adoption stuff comes in, so have at it. Oh, my, oh my God. Okay, so the kid has had... He's been through a, a childhood trauma. He's already in the system, first of all, because he's an adopted kid. So, more likely than not, this kid would have had a lot more time in the system, at least for the next mm, six months to a year, just for observations for the things that he observed. So that's out right there. Second, if you're going to adopt a kid, you don't just pick up a kid you've never met at the airport. (laughs) You have meetings. You hang out with the kid. You go do stuff with them so that you can build a bond with them before you decide, yeah, I think this will work. We'll adopt. Right. You don't... It's not a catalog, okay? It's not Sears and Roebuck for kids. That's not how the adoption system works. I'll take K7. (laughs) <laughs> so that'll be four to six weeks delivery sir <laughs> see i thought when they picked up the kid i like even worse i thought they were at a shopping mall 
It did look like a mall, didn't it? Yeah, and I was the like... The only thing that tipped me off that it was the airport was he was standing with a stewardess. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I, I thought that was just one of the workers. Um, yeah. Wait, so they put him on an airplane by himself? Yep. Again, would not happen. Did you, yeah, stewardess, can you just make sure this child who's about to be adopted by total strangers just makes it to them safely? Yeah, no, uh, the caseworker for Mikey would have flown with him. <laughs> That's insane. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Oh. Well, the the reason that tips you is because they pick up his luggage and his murder weapon is packed with his luggage. Right. With a dented aluminum bat. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of red flags about Mikey that no one really... A lot of characters don't really pick up on. I think that's... But that's the... You know, I think that's the general idea of the movie, though. Because all adults are oblivious. Oh, this movie should be called Stupid at... Stupid Adults. Because they're all (laughs) incredibly stupid. Like, all of them. There's not one smart one. Honestly. There's ones that do... That are suspicious. But then later they do stupid things. Yes. Um... So Mikey immediately meets his new parents with the flawless presentation of the adoption service in this film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, they bring him, uh, they bring him to their na- their house, and it's really neat. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a nice place. <laughs> it's the first thing he says. I was just like, wow, it's really neat. <laughs> uh, well, considering where he was before, I'm surprised he didn't say it's a little small for my taste. <laughs> yeah. Hmm, where can I bury my sister? <laughs> oh, it's just me? Fantastic. <laughs> Less work. Less grunt work yeah. for me. So, uh, we get a, I, I love his lines where he kind of alludes to the fact that he's like a crazy ch- like killer. Oh, like the, One of the lines here is, uh, they're talking about baseball, and he's like, you like to pitch? And he's like, yeah, but I'm a better hitter. Yeah. What? Well, I mean, he does stuff like that all the time, like like when he was doing the uh, uh, when he was doing the, the psychological evaluation. He's reenacting everything to a T as to what he did, and he not only he does that stuff later too. He does like drawings uh, with his sister <laughs> drowned in the pool. Right. That's like fridge art to the parents. Oh, I wonder what it means. Let's look at this child psychology book. Oh, it means he wants a longing for freedom. <laughs> and I don't even understand like why he draws that. Why would he want to call call attention to it if what he's trying to do is kill people and get away with it? But he that's the thing. He slips up a couple of times in the movie. Like more so, than yeah. it should have been possible. Well, he's not a, he's not a sophisticated uh, psychopath yet, so... No, again, guys... Just look at his psychopath training wheels. <laughs> again, everyone, nine years old. Yeah. So... He did, they did give him a sweet gun plane, though. That was kind of cool. The gun plane? All the toys and stuff they bought for him. Oh. Yeah, uh, he has one... It's like a, it's, it's a plane, but you hold it like a gun, and you pull the trigger, and it makes, like, the propellers go, and it makes a gun sound, like, because it's a fighter jet. I remember a friend of mine had one of those when I was a kid. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> um, this is my quite possibly one of my favorite characters in this movie we meet in this scene. Uh, ben. Oh. <laughs> ben yeah. is transcends child acting. Like, he's not even... It's not even that he's like a... Like, he's bad. It's just like when he's standing there, it looks like he doesn't know what to do with his arms. Yeah, I, he definitely looks like an uncomfortable... He's, he's uncomfortable in the, the situation. He has a great... But to be fair, I'd be pretty uncomfortable in this situation as well. This movie, this general set, seems like it would have an air of menace about it. <laughs> His facial expressions sometimes, I'm just like, what? What? Um, yeah. <laughs> he has a wicked pink shirt, though. Very 90s. And I like how their immediate greeting is an awkward high five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ben. I'm Mikey. High five. <laughs> and then the dad's like, all right. Getting along. All right. Good job, guys. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of people in that house when Mikey arrives. Yes. Uh, because there's, there's Mikey and mom and dad and then Ben and his mom. Who we never see again, right? Uh, at the end of the movie, we do. At the very end. At the very end. Okay. Uh, but I think... When all the the terrible things are happening to her kids, she's like, no, she's she out. is not around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're there by like the daughter's always looking after Ben. Yep. Um. Also, this is where the teacher shows up, and my God, there are a lot of attractive ladies in this movie. 
attractive 90s ladies. Yes. <laughs> um, that teacher, though. Yeah. The teacher, I'd argue, I'd argue the mom. Mm-hmm. And definitely Melrose Place later on. Absolutely. Yeah. Who, by the way, they're trying to say that she's 15 in this movie. She was not. <laughs> she was in her 20s. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what can you do? I'm just, I'm just uh, verifying for the people out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a pervert. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. She's not really 15. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's pretty much the intro to Mikey's new home. Yeah. Like I said his teacher comes in. We kind of get the idea that, the t- well, the teacher and the mom are friends. Yes. And when she's talking to her, I honestly had to rewind it because I was just, I wrote down, I didn't hear a word you said. I was lost in your eyes. <laughs> You're quite taken by this teacher. <laughs> yes, I was quite upset later with her demise. But anyway, um, we can, get a we get a nice cool shot of uh, the teaching him how to shoot a bow and arrow. Can we talk about the Native American scene? <laughs> Happened all the time. Happened all the time. Really, really, dude. So to do there archery, were... they needed to dress up with feathers. No, that I'm guessing that is almost like a, uh, a Cub Scout type thing. Okay. Boy Scouts or something where they would wear. You, you ever see the movie with um, Chevy Chase and John Taylor Thomas, Man of the House? I have not. Okay, well, it's. They do a very similar thing where he's in, like, a, you know, a Boy Scout type troop, but the theme is uh, Native Americans. All the kids wear, you know, the, the deerskin vests and they, they do the war paint and they have feathers in their headbands and stuff like that. And they do archery and, and other. Uh, Native American things. It's not entirely out of place, considering I think they're in New Mexico. I see. I never even knew where they were supposed to be. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's it's not entirely out of place for you know something that was going on in the '90s, or especially at the tail end of the '80s, beginning of the '90s. I'm going to assume they filmed it in California. <laughs> More than likely, yes. It's one of those <laughs> Uncle Sam situations. <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean, you get out into the deserts of California, you can make it look like the deserts of. New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Mikey goes to school. The he and Ben have their high five reunion. Yeah. Um, now we need to talk about something that was chilling to the bone. Marble time. What's that? Well, actually, before that, uh, when they introduce Mikey at school, um, the teacher says, "Oh, ladies, uh, kids, let's welcome uh, our new student, Mikey Trenton, mm-hmm. which is the name of the the parents." Uh, again, nope. <laughs> your kids, that your adopted kids, do not get your name right away. Took us a solid year. Yeah. Yeah, and because the adoption isn't complete until at least almost a year later. So not two and, days. No, definitely not. <laughs> and you would not be giving the kid your last name. They, they might do him the courtesy of calling him that. I know that, that some of the teachers at my kid's school did that, uh, but on paper. They still had their old last name. Okay. So, yeah. But, yeah. Marble time. Marble time. That terrified me. They are, ooh, they are children of the corn with that stuff, right? aren't they? Right? Yes. <laughs> children of the corn, village of the damned. Like, it just, it shook. I was like, whoa, whoa, what is, what, what movie am I watching now? <laughs> because the kids, I can't even explain it. It's just, it, it's unsettling um but basically the marble time idea is every time they do something good they put a marble in and yep. if the marbles fill up they get a prize but i was confused about the inconsistency of marble time because at first yeah. they say uh, that you hear them say something like oh mikey wants to do his homework on time so everybody gets a prize but we find it later it's just one person getting a prize yeah, there was. That, I definitely have that note as well, and uh, I I actually have a note because when, of course, because it's a it's a precursor to it. Obviously, Mikey is the one who gets the prize. He gets a watch, and I have a note that says, "How the hell are they all going to share a watch?" <laughs> right? You right. get it on Mondays. I get it on Tuesday. <laughs> Just share it around. And it's a boys' watch, so I mean, you know, the girls aren't going to want anything to do with that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Also, yeah. You know what I just realized? What's that? I don't think we said our names at the beginning. <laughs> I, I think I think they know at this point. I'm Brendan. <laughs> I'm Nathan. And welcome to the middle of our podcast. 
Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> so marble time is over. Uh, this th th this is this is probably one of the craziest dialogue exchanges coming up here. Um, oh, they're calling me about oh, it. Oh right shit! Now, actually, nice. <laughs> <laughs> nope, they're not. Oh, they hung up. It was a, it was <laughs> a false alarm. <laughs> yep. Um, because Ben and Mikey are walking home, and I wrote mm -hmm. I wrote this exchange. I don't know if you remember when they're talking about the prize, uh, for uh for marble time. The marble time. It's just like it's such a weird conversation. So Mikey says, "I wonder what the pri this is how it goes." I'll go back and forth, uh, Mikey and Ben. I wonder what the prize is. Probably something dumb. I think she's neat. That's because she's a friend of your mom's. I love my mom. Yes. Yeah, I remember that exchange, and, and it was super duper odd. <laughs> no kid has ever talked like that, ever. <laughs> Just, I like, has nothing to do. I don't know where, like, an RKO. Absolutely. There we go. Yeah. Got it in. Woo. That was a close one. Not really. <laughs> I'm sure we would have worked it in there eventually. That's right. And and also, Ben is the one that suggests they take the shortcut through the cemetery. But when Mikey says okay, Ben is like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, you were <laughs> the one who just suggested it. Well, I think he, from what I took from it is that he was trying to uh, trip out Mikey, get him like, oh, I'm going to scare him, think, make him think I like going through the cemetery. And then Mikey's like, yeah, okay, let's go. He's like, oh, well, this backfired. <laughs> No, no, I have to go through the cemetery. <laughs> There's more. That's exactly what his face says. I mean, look at that kid. That that way his voice should sound. Is the is the kid is the kid who plays Ben in the room with you there? I I heard. I thought I heard him just now. <laughs> he's apparently done. He's done pretty well for himself. He's one of the more successful people who were in this movie. Well, that's good. Because yeah. Brian has basically quit acting and uh, moved on to music. Oh yeah, he's he's yeah he's. Um, been doing music now for quite some time and uh, like I said he's he's touring with the Ataris which I think is, is pretty cool yeah. you know considering uh, it's kind of a twisty road to, to where he got to but it's uh, it's kind of cool that he's playing with one of the more I guess seminal punk bands from uh, from uh, out west I won't lie and I'll say I don't know who they are but that's cool. that's okay <laughs> that's okay <Brandon. laughs> but I, I'm sure they're great yes um, okay, so there's more crazy dialogue between these two, <laughs> because <laughs> they're talking about, Ben mentions his father, because he asks Mikey, how did your parents die? And he says, who says my parents were dead? And Ben's like, I don't know, you're adopted, so I just kind of figured. And then... Nope, again, not always the case. Right. <laughs> that, that's one thing. And then he said, and then Ben mentions, uh, his dad died, and Mikey says, did you see him die? And he said... No, he was at the hospital. And then he says, did you touch him? <laughs> what? I'll, I'll forgive that because that's absolutely like a, a curious thing that a kid would say. I mean, especially when it comes in regards to, um, you know, uh, a funeral. Not Maybe not necessarily like, did you touch him like at the, as soon as he died? But like, maybe like when you were at the funeral, did you, did you touch him to see what it, you know, what a dead body felt like? Because that's something, you know, kids, especially boys would, would, would ask. It, it it came across as odd though. <laughs> well, yes, because as an adult, you wouldn't say that, would you? <laughs> I don't know. It's just the way he said, like right after he died. Did you touch him? Like I don't know. It's just really <laughs> weirdly phrased for me. For me, it was upsetting, Nathan. Did you? Okay, June. Did you notice the uh, the name of the on, on the tombstone that he was lying at? I did not. It's a clinker. Clinker. Yeah, this is a very funny sounding name. I had to take note of it. <laughs> That's probably good for a drama. Yeah. What do we? Uh, oh shit! We got to throw a name up on the tombstone there, uh, Dennis Dimster Dink. <laughs> what do you? What do you think of the? What do you, hey guys, guys, what do you think of this movie? Oh, it's a real clinker, Dennis. That's the name we're using. <laughs> That's probably how it happened. Let's not lie. <laughs> yeah. So, so now we get the fantastic fridge art. <laughs> yes, which the parents think is just someone swimming. Yeah. And they say and it means that he's adventurous and longing for freedom. So they tell him, "Go out as long as you want." To be fair, <laughs> um, <laughs> I did a fair I did a fair amount of neighborhood roaming uh, at the same time that this movie was released at the, roughly the same age. So it's not unheard of, but uh, 
You know, you, you would have definitely been given a time to be back, not uh, go out as long as you want. We don't care where you go. Yeah, that was the thing that got me. I was like, give them some kind of time frame. Yeah, kids need boundaries. <laughs> yeah. This is the point where I'm wondering what the curriculum is in this school. <laughs> Are you noticing? <laughs> it's just kind of make sure you do bi your biology and uh, don't forget your movie report. <laughs> and then, like, at one point, he's like, EMC cubed or something like cubic meters. And I'm like, you're nine years old. Yeah. What yeah. grade are you in? Because <laughs> that's like, that'd be like grade three or four, right? Uh, let me see. Grade nine. Uh, grade by grade four. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think you're learning about that yet. No, definitely not. <laughs> you're you're, bas you're at that point. You're just kind of maybe starting to explore the uh, the concepts of bracketed uh, equations. As you may have guessed uh, by now, Mikey has still, besides the cold open, Mikey has not killed anyone. It actually takes quite a while before Mikey starts killing people. <laughs> yes, and I think that's why they put that opening for the movie, because otherwise yeah. it would be. I think it would be a bit more of a slog. To get to the actual uh, kills, yes. Did you? Oh, there was a there was a, a flub uh, in the next uh, classroom scene with the with the marble time. Okay, there's a flub when, Mike, before that that I skipped too. But go ahead, go ahead. Oh well, Mikey was uh, when he was trying to cheat. Uh, when he goes, when class is over, he gets up and he's in his uh, burgundy shirt. He goes over to cheat by putting marbles into the machine. Uh, that Rube Goldberg device that she has, and it, he's wearing like that uh, black shirt. And then when she calls him back over to talk about him cheating for the marble time, he's got the burgundy shirt back on again. What? Yeah, I did not know that. I absolutely noticed. That so his there. shirt changed in the same scene. Yep. yep. Wow. And not like a subtly. It wasn't like you know a, a, a lighter blue or something. It was like burgundy black burgundy <laughs> that is some awful continuity that is like unforgivable continuity <laughs> what was your continuity error uh this was a this was an actual flub like a line flub because oh. like i'm i'm certain this happened when ben is looking for mikey in the cemetery and he's saying his name i'm pretty sure he called him monkey <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure i heard mikey my monk monkey <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, wait, what? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he said his monkey. But anyway. So next we get a montage of them montage. being a happy family. At the zoo. Dig that funky zoo theme. I know, right? And Mikey shows that such a good boy that he is. And he, he tells the lady she forgot her purse. And the guy gives him half a dollar. Yeah, half a you dollar. shit with a half a dollar. <laughs> In 1992? Maybe a bag of chips. Maybe. I, what you're saying is you should have given Mikey a, a twenty spot. At least a at least a dollar. At least <laughs> here's half a dollar. And he doesn't even say like making saying it like half a dollar makes it sound less than if you say here's fifty cents. Yes, <laughs> it just makes it sound like more like mm, you're not worth a whole dollar. Here's half a dollar. <laughs> but they make mention of oh he's such a nice boy he has your eyes. Yeah, and then he <laughs> which makes I'm the... glad I have your eyes. <laughs> He's probably gonna have them for real pretty soon. Well, that's what, uh, when when he said that. Spoiler alert for the end of the movie. But does he? He doesn't do anything with her eyes, though. No, he doesn't. Which I was kind of a letdown. I was like, why would you lead in with that? Right. He should have plucked her eyes out. That's that's what I thought was gonna happen. I was like, oh, wrong, he's gonna stab I'm a her. Wrong person. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you took the foreshadowing. You didn't get the payoff. I understand. Right. I was, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I understand. Um. Ferris Bueller's dad is in this movie now. Yeah, I thought that was pretty. He says from St. John. I yeah, I looked that up. I found that out the, the other day too. Yeah. Um, he has a couple of weird moments though. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, this is a pretty weird movie. <coughs> is it? <laughs> well, I do. I did enjoy the part where they were, uh, where the mom and the teacher were shopping. Uh, and they make fun of some of the fashion. Yes. And the, the teacher goes, oh, my God, you should see some of the stuff that comes through my classroom. Which, you know, I read as pff, fourth graders. Man, they can't dress. Am I right? No fashion sense. <laughs> and then it goes from making fun of fourth graders' fashion to immediately, hey, do you still want a gun? 
Yeah, I'll take the gun that I have in my purse. You can have it. The dialogue in this movie. <laughs> what? I don't know what is going on. There's no transition. It's just, hey, look at all these clothes. <laughs> Silly outfits. Do you want a gun so you can protect yourself from t- attackers? <laughs> um. So, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, the Ferris Bueller's dad. I thought the shirts and skins scene was kind of... Like, I get that that was a thing back then. Yeah. Um, but the scene afterwards where he seems a little too hung up on why Mikey's not wanted to take his shirt off. I well, I get I, it's yeah, see we're looking at it from you we're looking at it from our standpoint. You know, if a teacher was uh on a kid about that, they might think, Oh well this kid this teacher's creepy, he wants to see this kid without his shirt on. But in at that time it would have been like, Okay, maybe he's got bruises and there's abuse going on and we need to talk about that. I, I, I got it. I, I was okay with it the first time, but he asks him like three times. <laughs> Yeah, he says like, I almost... "Who's your favorite? <laughs> who's your favorite uh, character?" He's like, uh, "What's your favorite movie?" And he says, "Freddy Krueger." He's like, "You want to be like Freddy? Is that why you don't want to take your shirt off?" <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, that's again the dialogue. I want to be just like Freddy Krueger and wear a shirt. Yeah, was well, he's, oh, he's known for his shirt? So yeah, I did. Again, it's I feel that it's something that it, it should have paid off. I don't want to make it sound like they should have made Brian. Bonds, I'll take his shirt off in this movie. <laughs> but uh, it's almost a situation where he's like, okay, well, he's got to clearly have, like, scars or something. Yeah. Or his parents, like, his, his biological parents uh, were not nice people in other ways where he had to take his shirt off, if you catch what I'm putting out there. Right. And, and- there should have been some sort of payoff, which, I, I again, I feel kind of let down that there was nothing there was no reveal about you know what his his biological parents were all about yeah i think they don't give nearly enough background like give us something to hold on to because he he kind of go like hums and haws about his real parents and then you just they never go back to it no and it's like he says at once one scene he said they're not dead and then in this scene he says "Eh, well that's a skeleton (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it just changes that subject. Yeah. I did enjoy uh his his Day of the Turkey um drawing that he did for Thanksgiving. Oh, the pilgrim getting murdered by the turkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turkey's revenge. Yeah. And the parents are like, eh, "That's normal." That's cool. Yeah, you know, kids like that sort of stuff. Uh oh, then the introduction of Melrose Place. <laughs> yeah, was the was Ben's older sister and yeah. <laughs> If I had seen this, if I had seen this when I was younger, I would have been so confused. <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. Uh, the idea of a dead kid is like the most is the classic prank. I mean, classic, I'm... classic prank, yeah. hilarious. And then uh. she says, "You sure are a good kisser." <laughs> yeah, she definitely, she definitely leads us get on some weird. Uh, roads upon his uh, ever burgeoning love map that is clearly going through because you know it's a second set of formative years that he's going through. I mean, I'm, I'm sure she doesn't know what she's doing, but she's really setting this poor kid up for for a hard fall. Yeah, and she doesn't even realize it. Yeah, because like, well, like he said. So basically, what happens is Mikey. Yeah, he pretends to be dead. So she comes home, which, by the way, they saw her car down the road uh, coming down from down the road, and Mikey was like, "Ben, it'll be hilarious. I'll pretend to be dead so she can kiss your sister." <laughs> and then she gives him mouth to mouth he obviously wakes up because he's faking it and he put like a ball under his arm to make it seem like he didn't have a pulse which is apparently a real thing And I, but again you feel that it should have been something that should have paid off in the it, movie it, it does when? later on uh, not to jump ahead but later on when he falls under the stairs they check his pulse and then when he walks away and is like walking into the kitchen, you see a ball go across the doorway. I did not even catch up that. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> I paid attention to something. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, that one that one is the one that is paid off a little bit. So I was okay. I was I was happy with that. Why are the kids learning how to spell assassin? <laughs> I don't know. We've already talked about what's going on. We don't know what's going on in this school. But this is one of the places where he slips up. He talks about the uh, the spelling bee that he won in El Cajon. Yeah. And which leads his teacher to look into, you know, what's really up with 
Mikey. And we get another Marvel time, Marvel time. Yeah. <laughs> where he gets the watch. We should also mention. And how the hell does everyone win a watch? <laughs> <laughs> we, we should also mention um, he really he's really obsessed with the fish in his house as well. Yes. The little baby fish who mm-hmm. I think he fed a frog to them. Yes. He's <laughs> like, eat that frog. He feeds, no, he feeds it to the, the little ones. He feeds it to the big one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is this, this is also where Mikey starts to become obsessed with Melrose Place. Yes. <laughs> that sounds and so great. <laughs> he feels like he's... Watches it it's, every It's night. funny because he's really sad and stuff like that. And I actually have a note here. Poor Mikey. Wait, what the hell am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare feel sympathy for him. <laughs> they do not even attempt to make anything sympathetic about him, though. No. Like... He's like a stone-cold killer the entire time. And I think... Uh, this is going to sound silly saying this is the flaw, but I think that's one of the movie's big flaws is that I feel like he should just be like messed up, but not just a, a, a vessel of evil. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like there, there, there should have been, there should be more nuance to his brokenness is what you're saying. I think so. Yeah. It's hard. It's, it's hard to kind of buy into that premise of just a kid that would just kill people. <laughs> And that's, I, I guess that is, is one of the problems that they, they kind of fall into with it. Like you said, they, he's, it's not a black and white situation. You, you, um, there's, he's presented as strictly evil. Everything he's done is for, is for selfish, altruistic motive, uh, non-altruistic motives rather. Um, and I don't feel that a kid with, at least with his level of brokenness would be full on sociopath at this point. Right. Yeah, nine you know, years old. I think old, he I would don't... be able to. Yeah, I think he would be able to empathize at least a little bit. Yeah, and there's nothing like all his emotions are faked. And I think mm. honestly, I, I'm gonna get full kudos to Brian Bonsall here because I think his like over the top, not over the top, but like kind of, it almost sounds forced when he says things like "I love my mom" or like "I'm glad I have your eyes" because I think it, his character it's supposed to sound that way. Yeah, yeah, his character is acting too. Yeah, like he's putting on this false persona. So I think honestly, he's I think he's the best actor in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, he definitely does a pretty good job. I mean, there's other people that are fine. Like the the Ferris Bueller's dad is fine. Melrose Place is fine. But like, I think he stands out for a kid who at, at that age to uh, to be able to, I guess, you know, either intentionally or un- even unintentionally portray, uh, you know. A, a kid with like blank emotion faking everything you know good on him yeah yeah exactly um mm. okay i did just ask you a question <laughs> okay uh ferris bueller's dad in this movie is he supposed to be the principal or the gym teacher i think he's the gym teacher okay because he has an but office if- he it could be a situation where he is the principal but also teaches gym. I've had principals who uh, taught like chemistry or math. They've they're the principal, but they also teach a class or two. That's true. In I the did. School, I did have so. that in ele- uh, elementary. So yeah, yeah. Okay, because I was like, I was like I thought he was a principal off the right off the bat, and then all of a sudden he was doing the shirts and skins thing. I was like, oh, he's the gym teacher. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So yeah. <laughs> Things are starting. This is where Mike. This is where Mikey has his killed the cat moment. Oh. <laughs> Instead of save the cat, this is how you know he's pure evil, right? Right. Also, animal deaths. Uh, it's hard to watch. Oh yeah. At least it's off screen. <laughs> I did. Um, it, it did. Uh, and it's like. <laughs> well, and let's talk about why he does that because he finds out Melrose Place has a boyfriend. Yes, and, and he wants to frame him for uh, killing her cat. This nine-year-old child can figure out the logic of framing someone for murder. <laughs> yeah, cat murder at the very least. Right, and and what happens is he puts the cat under the boyfriend's tire, and he mm-hmm. drives over it thinking he killed it, and then what, she's the only one home. Does he knock on the door? No, he honks the horn. Yeah. Rather than go in, like, oh, there's, I'm sorry, there's been an accident, and being like contrite about it, huh? Get your ass out here! I just ran over your cat. Yeah, he's got like almost no empathy because he's just like, it was an accident. Can I come in? <laughs> 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 oh, that poor cat. 
Oh, and then we get the next scene where he's kind of tattooing himself with a thumbtack. Yeah, what was that? That that was kind of just happened and then dropped. It's self harm. Yeah. It's again points to like the the trauma. And I think he was I I'm not sure if it was made super clear, but I think he was like putting her name or her initials or something. Okay, that wasn't yeah. yeah. If that if that's what he was doing, I didn't I didn't think that was like clear at all. I just thought he was stabbing himself with a thumbtack. Yeah. Um. So we should mention too at the same time the teacher is slowly finding out more about Mikey. Yes. Uh, finding out his well maybe not his real name but his name before, mm-hmm. and uh, maybe everything isn't quite right with this kid. Yeah, the murdered parents and the you know sister and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so she calls the police. She gets her information very easily. Yes, they like it's, a, it's we'll fax definitely it. plot convenience. Yeah, <laughs> we'll fax it to you. Uh, you know what? You just said you're a teacher, but you know what? We'll, we'll send you those uh, sensitive police files. Yeah, in, in a mm. in a in a room that is accessed by multiple people. Yeah, because she says to like a secretary, just like. Uh, let me know when my fax comes in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you fucked with Mikey's fish. Yes, he was pissed about that. I think that's where he really starts to snap. Yeah. Uh, first it's the well, and then we, and then of course Melrose Place reunites with her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, even though he he supposedly killed her cat. You know what? I'm just gonna say it. I wouldn't. You wouldn't if I what? if I thought that that if I was Melrose Place and that guy like I thought he ran over my cat, I'd be done. Well, I I wouldn't say I'd be done in that regard. Like he didn't do it on purpose. Uh, I think the the way he behaved following that might have indicated, yeah, maybe he's kind of a dick. So no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Like I said, if he had gone to the door and like knocked and and was like, oh, I'm really sorry, but I. There was an accident. I killed. I ran over your cat. He must have ran into my tires, and I'm really, really sorry. You can forgive that. You can't be like, honk, honk. Yo, know, I killed your cat. Why don't you get out of here? Making me wait. Door slammed in his face. Yeah. But we also get. Isn't this the the part coming up where um she's taking a bath and he's like in the same frame and shot with the mom as she's taking a bath. I feel like it was a cheat somehow cuz it looked really awkward the way they were framed. Uh, I have a note where were the adults? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I want to know why the bathroom was there. It did seem like a weird open concept bathroom upstairs, didn't it? it yeah, like it was like living room, no door to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And she's just there bathing knowing that the kid could just walk in whenever. <laughs> yeah, don't close the door and lock it or anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we get Mikey uh, teasing that he's going to put the hair straightener in the bath. That was actually like a decent bit of suspense. Yeah. You're you're just waiting for that first, uh, you know, human kill, I guess. But that didn't yeah, happen. Yeah, I actually thought... He's, a, he's an annihilator. He has to kill them all at once. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought, like, he might... I, this is, again, this is the first time I've ever seen this movie. Um, so I thought, oh, he this is the first kill coming up. But nope. Nope. Because or for not first kill, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, because the, the the next kill again, another water <laughs> slash uh electronic electrocution. Because he kills Melrose Place's boyfriend. Yes. By kicking the boombox into the jacuzzi. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Mm. Again, didn't didn't uh, didn't feel as bad. Yeah, not as bad, but still <laughs> way more than it should have been. Yeah, I, and again, given the fact that they're living in what is clearly a, a again a new subdivision development area, that that thing would have had breakers, it would have popped, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I feel like those. I I feel like every movie that uses that kind of. Uh, it's just, if they use that in the house as like a new house, it yeah, it, it's it's cheap and it's 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 obviously not um, uh, well researched, right? But now it's okay because Mike, as Mikey says, now Melrose Place can just love me, yeah, <laughs> because he's uh, not <laughs> very obvious about <laughs> what he's been doing. Um, 
he gets more and more obvious because doesn't he say to the mother too he's like if I threw this hair straightener in the water it would be the same as an electric chair yeah and then later on we get lots of scenes of characters going electric chair (laughs) (laughs) yeah there's a lot of really slow it just dawned on me moments for these people yeah I thought it was interesting that that, uh, Belrose Place was wearing a bodysuit she's wearing a bot like a bodysuit like her like she's not wearing a bathing suit it's like a it's like a bodysuit I'm like well it was the 90s but I wonder if because Melrose Place began the same year as this movie was released I wonder if the director tried to get her to do like a a nude scene and she knew Melrose Place was right around the corner and was like no nope (laughs) yeah I, I've I've uh, I've got a a good gig I think. <laughs> I thought it, again with the 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 dialogue comes up where the teacher is getting some uh, some the stuff sent from the cop. He he gives her like this this forewarning, you know. But check it out before breakfast. It ain't exactly rated G. Yeah, well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what after breakfast you can watch. You can't watch you can't watch rated R's. I, I'm guessing what he was getting at is like, you know, don't do it while you're eating because it'll make you sick. Yeah, but don't do it before breakfast because it ain't rated G. Yeah, that didn't make any sense. Yeah. Come up with a better, come up with a better line, detective. Yeah, detective Duster. <laughs> yeah, um, I have a note here that just says flower science flower science i think it's when she looks at the because mikey dropped a bunch of petals in the in the jacuzzi with the dead boyfriend oh and she's like she's like rolling the the flower around and stuff love just only me yeah (laughs) she's having another she's having a dumb uh aha moment and she takes the petals out and puts them in the water and they're the same petals and she's like oh shit yeah (laughs) so she goes to tell rachel who is Mikey's mom. And I just have a thing here where I was like, did Rachel just walk out of a fucking bookshelf? <laughs> did you what? did you notice that? What's that? No. There was a bookshelf. She comes in, she's like, Rachel, Rachel, are you home? And then suddenly the bookshelf opens and she walks out of it. <laughs> she walks out I of I did not room. notice that. Yeah. I feel that that should have been something, again, that uh, should have played into that final act. Right? I was like, do they live in a castle? I had no defense for that. That was not a thing. No, people weren't just building random d- d- bookshelf doors. No, I was I I rewound that at least once. <laughs> like, oh my! So we are getting into the real nitty gritty here with us. Yeah, we're rounding the corner, man. Because Mikey's watching again. We mentioned earlier Mikey's funniest home videos. Yeah. Um. And. Uh, Hold on a second. Yeah, he's watching Mikey sending his home videos, and the mother sees that he's obviously filmed the uh, death of the boyfriend as he films everything. Right, because up until this, she was still she still had blinders on to him being all messed up. She wouldn't accept it. Right. And then when she's obviously confronted with video evidence, there's not much denying it. And this scene, sorry, this scene made me so mad because because no one can take down a nine year old. Right. <laughs> now seeing this video what does she say when she sees the video of him killing him she says Mikey go to your room well, didn't he, wasn't like what have you done yeah and then go to your room but, but yeah. then go to your room like uh, Mikey come with me we're going to the police yeah or we're going to the or, adoption you know, center play it cool it's like oh that's a pretty funny video well let's go down for supper yeah and then you know tip out and call the cops right at <sighs> that point I don't like I don't care about the kid's welfare anymore. Like, you know he's yeah. messed up enough to kill yeah. someone in a calculated manner. Yeah. <laughs> the mother is dumb. So she gets... I actually have worst, dumbest death. I... <laughs> yeah. She gets hit by a hammer because she just mm-hmm. sits there. And so she yep. locks herself in a room. Like, he is nine. Honest to God, he is nine. <laughs> then no one, no one has the the fight or flight response to fight a nine year old. I'm not advocating fighting children, but if they are coming at you with implements of destruction, trying to kill you, guess what? Game on, guys. If you could take one thing away from this podcast, don't fight children, <laughs> unless they're trying to kill you, literally kill you. Yeah, 
You better make sure first. So, yeah, she locks herself in a room. Mikey comes in through, like, a window. Like, breaks the window and makes his way in. And yep. and she does knock him over at one point. And I'm like, there! He's down! Like, you won! Just keep him down! Kick, yeah. kick the knife out of his hand! He, You're considerably larger. Sit on him! He weighs, like, 80 pounds! <laughs> I will say, dude, that a pretty sweet slingshot. I like the slingshot. Yeah, it is. It is pretty. Uh, it is pretty crazy. It's a huge one. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. So that's okay. So she, he kills her. Then calls dad. And call, uh, well, no, he kills her for kills her first, and they think he's dead too, right? Because of the whole. Oh ball yes, the yeah, because thing. yeah, the whole ball thing, right? Um, because Ferris then Ferris Bueller's dad and. Um, the teacher arrive because they the teacher is already suspecting something and she's convinced uh, Ferris Bueller's dad very easily too <laughs> that something is up. Yeah, and uh, she she kind of takes off or she stays outside. He goes in and uh, call. Uh, who's he called? He called the cops at that point, or he tries to call the cops. Yes, but there's no phone because he Mikey again cut the cord after he called his dad. Right. And then yeah. Mikey shoots him with an arrow. Yes. Through the the stomach at close mm-hmm. range, but it goes completely through him. Yeah, I don't know what kind of uh, draw weight he had on that bow, but I don't think it was that heavy. <laughs> I'd like to see the shot of where the arrow actually goes when he when they were shooting the scene. Yeah. <laughs> Probably just like, bloop, <laughs> right in front of him on the ground. But yeah, it just like... Uh, <laughs> he has some amazing strength, mm. and that's and then also that kills him. Like, I think I don't know if that would kill him instantly like that. Not not instantly. No, no. not where he was shot. Anyways, no, not in the if, they, gut. if Mikey had shot him in like the heart or the head, I, I'd give it. But it, he would have uh, he would have had a good you know couple hours of suffering ahead of him. Right. If it was left untreated. <laughs> Holy moly! So. Uh, my, uh, the teacher comes in now and you, you, I know this is one of the great lines in the movie so go ahead oh you taught me so many things but can you teach me one more thing what teach me how to die <laughs> and he kills her with a marble ball bearing but it was. I thought it was a marble no it was ball bearing I thought, he, I thought that because he says marble time they say mar yes because ball bearings look like marbles. Oh. Would that kill her though with that little slingshot? Uh, where did he hit her? I think he hits her in the face, but then she goes ah and like hits the wall. <laughs> well, I mean, depending on again how what kind of uh <coughs> draw strength you could get out of that slingshot and a ball bearing, I don't feel that it would kill her immediately. It would definitely it would definitely hurt considerably, especially to get one right in the face. Uh, but I don't not, not it, eh, it depends on where I get hit her in the face but I don't think it would like it, it wouldn't be an instant death again uh, at the most it would knock her out at the least it would be like oh you little bastard what'd you do that for yeah exactly I, I think yeah. I just oh my god and people just stand there waiting to get shot with an arrow waiting to get hit with a ball bearing like just get out of the way Oh yeah, they're just they're too too dumb to live. My the, the adults in this movie. God. Um, I just have a note here. We talked about it already, but I was like, why is Ben and Melrose's mother never there? Yeah. <laughs> she lives because she doesn't. I I wonder if that actress had to leave. That's a possibility. And they filmed the last scene and filmed the beginning, and then she was like, I gotta go, guys. We'll just, yeah, we'll play it off. Maybe she's just a fun-loving single mom out getting her drink on. <laughs> we'll cut to her, but we'll use it as stand-in. <laughs> so, so I guess he calls, well, he calls dad. Dad's got a corded car phone, uh, and they just do some chit-chat about what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, and then he's, then he talks to, um, he sneaks into Melrose Place's bedroom. And he's got his hair all slicked back. Yeah. Because now he wants to look like, um... Um, Eric Trump. <laughs> <laughs> that is, this is another a, great A sociopath. This is a biopic, guys. 
Oh man! But yeah, she she shuts him down hard. Yeah, like he he's like trying to say that he loves her. She just shuts him down hard. And again, I wrote, "Ah, oh, poor Mikey, stop saying that." Nathan, what are you talking about? I don't know what I'm thinking here. What were you thinking? <laughs> I I was thinking that there was something that I felt bad for Mikey. Wow. <laughs> Even after he brutally murdered everybody, poor guy, he just wants someone to love. Well, they're all really dumb though. No, he just wants someone to control. That's how his... <laughs> yeah. If I... That was... Remember, he said, he said if around. I had a girlfriend, I would I would protect her. Yeah. And he... Uh, but, I would do anything for her or something like that. You know what? It, Melrose should not have told him he was a really good kisser twice. That was one of the things. Yeah. Uh, she gets... Doesn't she get, like, a Photoshop of him? Yes! Like, him and her? Yes! It's like those awkward-looking picture of him next to, next to her photo. Yeah. Where her yeah. like boobs are almost hanging out, <laughs> yeah. Um, which, by the way, that picture was like on the coffee table. That yes, was, like, that was like for the family to see. <laughs> not, not exactly a conservative uh, photo of her. So, Dad comes home. Yep. And somehow um, doesn't every- see anything. Yeah, everything is not as it seems, and he is absolutely oblivious. Mikey asks him, "Will you always love me?" <laughs> yeah. And then Molotov. <laughs> yeah, because he has set up the the table. This nine-year-old child has managed to sit everyone up at the table. Oh, the core strength he must have had when he was dragging his gym teacher? Yeah. Like, oh my god. This is, I, I would not have been surprised if at the end of the movie there was a twist that he had an adult accomplice. Yeah. Maybe it was like his 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 biological parents showed up and was like, "Done well, Mikey." Or it was the guy with the mustache in the brown car. What? <laughs> Burt Reynolds? Yeah, exactly. He's like, "Hey, you're I did like how they." Uh, my brother and I thought it was uh, a nice touch for that he had set up the the table. He'd also put the the teacher's skeleton there. I don't know how he would have snuck that skeleton out of school, but <laughs> but it's to fake his death, right? It's the fake his death because uh, the he asked them about the skeleton uh, earlier because he made mention of that, and he said, H- "Is it real?" Yes. How old was he when he died? Well, I wouldn't say much older than you. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic classroom talk. <laughs> also, um, this is a little co- uh, uh, film th- detail thing, but when they cut cut to everyone in the, at the table, the teacher is still breathing. Yes. Did you notice that too? Because. Should not be well. She would not be dead. Maybe incapacitated. I I think, I <laughs> but I think they were trying to suggest she was dead. But I thought, uh, and they just I think the actress. Up. I think the actress just <laughs> couldn't hold her breath. <laughs> yeah, Molotov cocktail. Um, he makes a Molotov cocktail, and it just explodes the house with the the gas. And I I, the, I have this note: take that model house, because <laughs> it was clearly a model that they blew up. Yeah, they did not make a real explosion. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh it was a uh, crazy. And then the great thing is that when the dad sees everyone at the table, his reaction is fantastic. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Which just goes again to prove the theory that the adults in this movie were too dumb to live. Yeah. And then we and then basically <laughs> the only one that lives is well, Ben doesn't die. But no. Uh, Melrose, Melrose Place, and her mom, who just shows back up. <laughs> what have I meant? And you know, the only reason why she got to live was because she was a clearly a horribly negligent parent. <laughs> it would have been great if she came back at the end and was like, "What I miss? Anything?" <laughs> like, or she could stroll up. What have you kids been up to? <laughs> what do you? Why are the police and firemen here? <laughs> oh, I didn't know we were having a bonfire tonight. <laughs> Oh, but then Mikey, they think Mikey's dead, but he is not. Because he gets yeah. adopted by Nora Dunn and Patrick Bateman. <laughs> and uh, again, damn it, I want a sequel. Uh, also, Highway Adoption? <laughs> they found him randomly wandering the roads with amnesia. You don't give that kid away. You stick him in the system so they can try to help jog his memory, so they can find out who he is more psychological testing this movie and its adoption processes are just 
Oh my god. It, and I just want to say uh, I agree I agree with that 100%, but I think the amnesia thing is so that he can use a different name. Yes, I understand. I do understand that because they like we just decided to call him Josh. Yeah. But you he still has amnesia and if he you guys have not even tried to figure out who he is really you, you don't just give him the strangers <laughs> yeah oh no 100 percent. to them he has amnesia yeah, yeah. um I, I think for him that's like his cover so he can mm-hmm. continue doing what he does um and yeah. then his new parents are like very very christian too they're like yes. oh god has showed us the path yep so he gets adopted by them. That's pretty much the tail end of the movie. Roll credits. I want my sequel. <laughs> That's Mikey. Um, well, I mean, Nora Dunn and Christian Bale. I mean, let's see what they're doing. Maybe they can. I thought he said it was, I thought he said it was Jason Bateman. Uh, Patrick Bateman. Oh, American Psycho. He looked like he looked to me like Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. Okay. And she was more of like a Bobo Nora Dunn, but she kind of looked like Nora Dunn to me. Right. That was Mikey. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Great film. Yep. Um. So I mean, I guess at this point we go to the uh, we go to our Rotten Tomatoes uh, reviews, but I'm just bringing it up right now, and I don't know if it actually has that many reviews. There's only four of them. There's four critic reviews, and there's some audience reviews. Also, all movies gave it one and a half stars. Suck it, all movies. This movie is at least a three. <laughs> uh, in terms of enjoyability, yes. Yeah, I don't know but about there's only two, structure. Wow, and there's only two that I can read. Dialogue. Oh no, no, no. the The dialogue is uh, often left field. Uh, the events are often right field, and there the two shall meet. It, the movie's bonkers, but super enjoyable. Um, this one is from TV Guide. Dim- <laughs> Dimster Dank uses graphic violence to try and cover up holes in Mikey's plot that you could drive a Mack truck through. I will agree there are a few plot holes. Yep. Uh, Clint Morris gave it a positive review from uh, Movie Hole in 2003. High-spirited thrills. Bonsall is freakishly frightening. Yep. I agree with that. Those are the only critic reviews we could find on Rotten Tomatoes that you, you can read. There there are some there are some uh, uh, audience reviews. This one is This one makes me a little bit disturbed about the person that wrote it. A child killer makes this film worth watching. <laughs> that's all. Like, that's all, he has like a checklist. Like, okay, boobs and da, 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 and child killer meets all those criteria. Yeah, and there was another reviewer who wrote, "I saw this on cable years back." Orphan, another movie about a killer kid who gets adopted. Seems like it will be like this. It is. Uh, and if it is, I don't want to see it. This movie was too violent and twisted for my liking. What did he... Lightweight. What did he, uh, what did he expect? Lightweight. Um, this is, this is a review. This is one mean kid. One and a half stars. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he's not wrong. Uh, not a single believable moment here. And the lead simply isn't a talent. You can shut your mouth, Kenny N. Isn't a talented enough actor to make us scared of him. I was terrified of this kid. Yeah. When I was a kid, I was like, I hope I never meet a kid like this. Um, this is this is great. This guy gives it one star, but his review is bad. The kid kind of reminded me of Nader. <laughs> like Ralph Nader. I'm assuming that's what he means. Holy! That kid, kinda... Ralph Nader, is not the first name that comes to mind. <laughs> oh. oh, here's one. Uh, totally hilarious. Oh, wow. Uh, this cute, uh, the cute kid from Family Ties took a career leap into the dark genre of serial killer movies. Fortunately, with not so clever grown-ups. I think this reviewer summed up everything we said about this movie in just that little quip. Unfortunately, he only gave it one and a half stars, so you can suck it too. <laughs> this is, uh, I got two more here, really quick ones. This guy, this guy's review just says, not interested. <laughs> he didn't even re- see it. His review is, I guess Mikey is creepy then. 
<laughs> and then this last one from Michael A. One and a half stars. Hee <laughs> hee. Mikey is my name. It's awful. <laughs> Uh, I think I have one here that's kind of similar to how I felt uh, when I originally saw this way, way back. Uh, as a kid, I hated this kid. Saw it when I was his age. Freaked me out a bit. But only seeing it as a kid uh, was it really any scary or good. Still, it's one of those take-me-back-to-my-childhood ones. <laughs> it that, that does take me back to my childhood and i will say i found him quite menacing uh, especially as a, a kid thinking that you know somebody my age could do something like this yeah it's it luckily my dad was like it's all a movie you know it's fake right <laughs> <laughs> i okay i wasn't gonna read anymore but this is a very long one but i just want to read one of the sections because it seems okay. very hateful <laughs> Well, he says, also a very minor complaint I have is the kid neighbor who befriends Mikey. This The kid <laughs> looked ugly, dressed for <laughs> shit, and just oh my God. reeked of nerdiness. I was hoping that since Mikey had no problem killing a four-year-old girl, he would be able oh. to dispatch this tool as well. Oh, well. Wow. <laughs> God, so much. Sincerely, President Trump. <laughs> yeah. Big. Bigly. Um, huge fan yeah, again that was mikey yeah. uh, i guess at, at this point um i'm gonna read a little poetry yeah the low haiku it's time it's time for uh some low haiku brian bonsall kills all wish this movie gave me a sequel <laughs> You do. Ferris Bueller's dad is dumb. Wait, what was that the, that was a long one. That was more than a haiku. Ferris, no, Ferris Bueller's dad. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. We should just do haikus every time where they go way over. <laughs> <laughs> You've been going for 15 minutes, Brendan. I think it's time to wrap this haiku up. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All my haikus are hymns. Um, okay, so here's mine. <clears throat> Really stupid adults. Push him right the fuck over. 80 pound killer. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I, have, you know, I have an addendum to my final line. Yeah. Bueller's dad there you go. is dumb. There we go. There we go. Fixed it. Boom. Now it's fixed. Nailed it. Boom. Done. Yep. Boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> um. So yeah, that was Mikey. It was... I, I, I would recommend you watch it. <laughs> I recommend watching it too. It's pretty out there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> every line is just magic. Every line of dialogue no. and every line of cocaine that was probably done by the director. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm absolutely gonna. I'm gonna when we put when this gets posted. I'm I'm sharing and tagging uh, Brian Bonsall in this. I I hope he listens and I hope he has a good sense of humor about the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and well, I'll reiterate again. He's the best part of this movie. Well, yeah, I, excellent acting job on the whole. Um, you know sociopath thing yep i feel bad for him because <laughs> he i can't imagine being a child and being like okay so in this scene you murder and someone being in this movie yeah it would be a little oof, scary and traumatic that's for sure yeah i mean it's not like as as bad as i would feel for someone like mackenzie aston for <laughs> garbage pail kids but <laughs> you brought this on yourself <laughs> <laughs> oh poor mackenzie um <laughs> so i guess at this point before we start plugging things that sounds bad we should uh, talk about what's coming up in our next for our next movie. You gonna give us a little hint or room? <laughs> you went too high here. <laughs> <on that phone. laughs> can you still? Only dogs can hear you now. Yeah, my my dog here is reacting. Actually, <laughs> she, she's about to attack. Um, yeah, give you a hint. So our next one will be uh, you know two weeks from now. I'm not gonna figure out the date. You figure it out. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> I'm not your math teacher. Yeah, it's uh, your stupid calendar, your planner, your PDA. It's the 27th. I think that's right. Okay. So here's your clue. Okay. We're all connected in the end. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping you'd like that. Yeah. There you have it. Um, this is one I wasn't sure Nathan was gonna be on board with, but he's watching it. I've already seen it before. Oh, that's right. So. so and it's October, so it is going to be, of course, a horror film. 
And I feel that it also falls into the uh, too dumb to live yes. uh, genre that Mikey clearly you know, had going for it as well. Yep. And uh, yeah. <laughs> if this is a further clue about what the movie is called, Mariah will be here as well. <laughs> if anybody's following <laughs> our countless, uh, count, countless, count, countless, countless Oof. barbs thrown at Mariah's uh, schlong. Hey, mine are all complimentary. There's, they are not barbs in any way. They are all meant to accentuate the uh, size, or just you know, call you know, call it a game. Recognizes game. That's just how it goes. <laughs> oh, I see how it is. <laughs> Well, let's plug away. Um, you want to talk about a certain uh, Simeon friend of yours? Yes, uh, my good friend Montrose Monkington the uh, Third. As always, you can check him out on Facebook, uh, Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and Friends. Uh, also on YouTube, Montrose Monkington TV, and on Twitter at Montrose Third. Um, uh, recently, we just had uh, a bunch of videos from the more recent uh, pay per view. Uh, the Hell in a Cell uh, and he also did a community centric interview with a, a minister from a local church so he's all over the place that monkey of mine <laughs> that monkey of mine yeah how does he feel about you is the relationship getting is it still fractured it's it's getting there I mean we're we're seeing uh, a counseling like a therapist and uh, we're working on it so okay it's 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 a process. It's a process. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I will say before I actually plug the Twitter and the Facebook and all that, I guess I never really mentioned it. But next week we have a very special uh, interview. Yes. Um. So not your typical mini episode next week. Um. Unfortunately, Nathan was not able to make it to this, but I did get to interview three actors from The Room. Yes, that one. <laughs> not Room. Not Room. Not not the. Critically, critically acclaimed good movie but the best worst movie The Room Tommy Weisau's yeah um, but yeah so next week I have uh, we I have uh, Robin Paris who plays Michelle um, Carolyn Minot who played uh, uh, Lisa's mother Claudette and last but not least Dan Jan Jan Jinnigan I hope I said that right and who plays uh, Chris R a.k.a. the drug dealer who almost kills Denny. Okay. So, well, that, that's a pretty uh, pretty big kudos uh, to you for getting that. Yeah, that's awesome. I was really happy with that. So that's cool. check that out next week. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, definitely. And uh, do you have any yeah. questions for me about this Oh, movie? and I didn't plug anything. So you can... You didn't? Oh, well, go ahead. We, plug away. Uh, check out What Were They Thinking? Uh, it's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can find us on anywhere, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, uh, YouTube, Podbean, and a bunch of other ones, you know. Uh, that you totally made Rocket up. Rocket Rails, uh, uh, Firestarter, Fan Club pages, mostly. <laughs> and GeoCities. Geo C- yes, please check out. Angel Fire. Please check out our GeoCities, <laughs> uh, our Twitch account. Um, we're on, uh, what's that, what's that? It's that thing that the WWE used to use. About, we're on Tout. Vine? <laughs> oh, tout, tout, rather, yeah. We got Vines out there. Check us out. Yeah. Uh, also on Facebook, what were they thinking? We have a Twitter a Twitter page, WWTT Podcast. So follow us there for all the latest updates and news. So, yeah. Okay. I do have a question for you. Oh, well, do. Fire away. I have a couple. Okay, well, I've, I'm pretty knowledgeable about this movie. Well, so. that's good because I mean, we, we did, okay. and we did just talk about it for a while. So, but the, right. the things right. are just not connecting in my head. Well, well, fire away. In, in a movie mm-hmm. where, <laughs> which presents the adoption process in a completely unflawed and amazing, <laughs> and like virtually accurate way. Hmm. Um. In a film where, rather than pushing over a murderous nine-year-old, adults just wait to die. Right. <laughs> this is a minor detail, but in a film where children are learning how to spell the word assassin in school. Okie doke. <coughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> and in a movie where one of the actors straight up doesn't know what to do with his arms. <laughs> I just... So much more, but 
Right. Marble time. I have to ask. Uh, what's that? What were they thinking? It's time. Let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple brews, baby. We love your movies. We love the bad ones, too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh, yeah. Everything I learned from movies With a one last plot holes a gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy with your friend Steven Izzy at eilfm.podbean.com